Hi folks, welcome to Truck King and to the lovely big island of Hawaii. So today we're taking a look at this, the 2024 Toyota Grand Highlander. And why does this exist? Well, if you wouldn't be caught dead in a minivan, but you still have to move a lot of people and stuff, this might be the vehicle for you. And we're gonna take a deeper look at it right now. There are three different engine options available under the hood of the Grand Highlander. So at base, you just have a gas option that's a 2.4 liter turbocharged four cylinder gas engine. You move up to the middle and there's a standard hybrid option. Now that's a 2.5 liter four cylinder paired with an electric motor. And then the model you're looking at right here is the Hybrid Max. This also uses the turbocharged 2.4 liter and it's again paired with that electric motor. And this is actually the same setup that you're gonna find in the new Tacoma. But interestingly, this is transverse. So it's front wheel drive base, whereas the Tacoma of course is longitudinally mounted because it's rear wheel drive. So same engine, but different application, which is interesting. And if you're wondering about power numbers, I'll put them up here, but I will tell you the big numbers. This hybrid max makes 362 horsepower and 400 pound feet of torque, which is a significant amount for a vehicle like this. So styling wise, I actually really like the departure away from the Highlander. I don't think this looks just like a regular Highlander, and that's a good thing. You want them to be separate so people will recognize it's a different model. And, and in that way, I have to tell you, this is a clean sheet design. They didn't just take a Highlander and stretch it out. This is a brand new vehicle from the ground up. And compared to the Highlander, it's about six inches longer and it has four extra, extra inches of wheelbase. So it's a bit bigger, but don't confuse them. It's not the same as the Highlander. All right, it's time to see whether or not the Highlander is as grand as they say. Steve, climb on in. And this might be the most important part of this video because this vehicle is all about fitting people and stuff. So here in our Platinum model, we have the captain's chairs. And I like to first start by talking about the baby seat situation. So here we have lower latch and top tethers on both of these seats. In the third row, there's only one lower latch position and two top tether positions. I'm not sure why they wouldn't have put three top tethers across there, but who knows. So uh, yeah, let me climb in now. So this is 39 and a half inches of leg room and it's plenty. I fit good in here. I'm comfortable. This seat's all also pretty far back, but lots of leg room. My knees aren't too tall. My headroom is just enough. The sunroof does encroach on me a little bit here, but it's really no problem. I could definitely ride back here for a long trip. Now, outside of the space, let's talk about the amenities because there's loads of them. First of all, always love the sunshades, especially if you have kids in rear facing car seats. That's very important. I like that you get a little vent right up here, right in your face. And then in the center, I have HVAC controls. I have heated and cooled second row seats. And then one of my favorite features, and this is only available on the Hybrid Max, a three prong plug, which is good for 1500 watts. They actually put an inverter in here, so you can power a lot of stuff off that plug. And there's another plug in the back. And the other thing I'll point out is this cool little center console. It actually is removable too. So if you want to get rid of it, you can. Then you stick it in there. It's got cup holders, a spot for your stuff, a spot over here for maybe a tablet or a screen of some kind. So that's pretty handy too. And always handy that if you don't want it, you take it out. Now let's climb in the third row and we'll see what that's about. So what Toyota has done here is they allow the seats to push forward and tumble and they've installed these monster grab handles here just to make it easier to climb in. So let's see how it works for me here. There we go. So this, getting there a little dusty, is 33 and a half inches of third row leg room and it's a little tight for me. Um, I have just enough knee room here. My big issue is that the floor comes up a little bit so you can probably see how tall my knees are. And then I mean, I have 
just enough headroom. I could ride back here for a short trip, but I'm not doing a long road trip back here. And I'll remind you, I'm six foot two, 300 pounds. So I'm bigger than your average human, but still a smaller adult is probably better suited for this third row. Um, but again, I do have to point out the amenities because there's loads of them. I get my own USB-C port. I get my own massive cup holders here, which I could put bottles into and things like that. So just because you're in the third, they don't forget about you and your own little HVAC vent right up there in your face, which is cool. So now let me see uh, what it's like to climb out. And I will say I like the handle and I like the step that's down there because ingress and egress are uh, pretty simple. Now let's look at the storage here. We'll open our hatch. And this is the key. Behind this third row, it's 20.6 cubic feet of space. And you can see it's pretty sizable. And this is usually the compromise in these vehicles. It's like, do you want people in the third row or do you want to haul stuff? Because a lot of the times you can't do both. Here they've made sure you can do both. With this seat up, this is a decent amount of space. Of course though, if you want to tumble them, they're manually tumbling. Somehow, there we go gotta hold that handle for a while there you go and now this opens up just about 58 cubic feet of space so yes if you have no one in your third row that's loads of space pretty nice flat floor there too now other features back here you get just a little storage tray here but then that's your tools and your sunshade cover and underneath this there is a spare tire which is nice and then another plug at the back that's also a 1500 watt plug so if you're back here you know tailgating hanging out you can also plug your stuff in Okay, folks, now here we are driving the Grand Highlander Hybrid Max. And I mentioned there's a load of power here, Dad. So let's uh, go ahead and feel it. Kick it. It's just okay. It's fantastic. It's, you know, when you just got to get the soccer practice on time. <laughs> and you're right. For this kind of vehicle, I guess that's maybe I got to adjust my expectation because that does kick pretty hard considering that, yeah, it's just another family hauler, right? Uh, and I think Toyota, they've said that in the past, but Hybrid Max, it's, it's not just about fuel economy. It's also about power. All these new Toyota hybrids, they're making sure that the fuel economy is there, but that you're also getting that, that strong electric power delivery, and, and that's here as well. That is the benefit of electric, and, you know, and you're not really paying for it, so to speak because unlike having a large displacement gasoline engine so that you can get that kick in the pants, uh, electric will give you the same thing with a lot smaller output and it, uh, it doesn't bleed your fuel bill either. Sure. The other smart thing that Toyota does, and they do this on a lot of products and now on Grand Highlander as well, when you get the hybrid, it's all wheel drive, but there is no drive shaft from the front to the back. The rear axle is driven by the electric motor. So that's another way that they're helping with the fuel economy, right? because you just don't have all that mass still spinning uh, unnecessarily. And when you don't need all-wheel drive, well, then you're not going to get it either. So yeah, it's, it's saves, automatic. Saves, saves weight, too. Exactly. Or so, less component hanging down. Yeah, that's a, that's a smart system. Again, it was introduced. I actually think it was introduced on, uh, on Prius all-wheel drive. I think that was the first product in North America to get it. But all of their hybrid all-wheel drive systems have gone that way, and it's just a good idea. So the Grand Highlander we're in here is platinum. This guy is, you know, top of the line. And it's actually funny, someone pointed out today, isn't it weird to have a platinum model with bronze trim? <laughs> You'd think it would be chromed out. But, you know, I guess uh, they're just looking for whatever makes it luxurious. And I think the interior is nice here, Dad. I don't know if you have any thoughts on it, but we get the big touch screen. I have a 12 inch uh, digital display right in front of me, which is totally customizable. I love all the information that I can get up here. Uh, head up display, mm -hmm. digital rear camera mirror, wireless phone charging, uh, seven USB-C ports. And yes, they've actually gone away from USB-A. So this thing is just USB-C. But the advantage there, Dad, is that they charge faster. <laughs> USB-C charges faster than the old one. And 13 cup and bottle holders. <laughs> yeah, and, and big cup holders, right? For the big gulps That's and the it. huge water bottles people carry today. So what Toyota did this time around, and, and rightfully so, 
is they looked at this end of the market because they were bleeding customers. Um, people who said, I, I actually need a, a minivan, but I won't be caught dead in a minivan. And the existing Highlander, frankly, just wasn't big enough. So Toyota says, rather than losing these people to another brand, we'll give them what they want. Now, once you've given them the space that they want, what's the other thing that they want? Luxury. Luxury, appointments, electronics, and I'm sure when those guys sat in the room and did the design, that's what it said up on the blackboard, is premium customer doesn't care what it costs. Sure. Do it all. Yeah, do it all, and that's definitely what it feels like here. And, and it is interesting talking a little bit more about where it fits in the lineup, because you're absolutely right. If you don't want a Sienna before the Highlander felt small, now it feels bigger, but I'll say you guys saw me in the third row. It's not huge back there, so if you really are still prioritizing space, you're still going to get the minivan. But the other, the other vehicle that this is now encroaching on is the new Sequoia. And the reason I say that is because the Sequoia has 0.2 inches more third row legs grill so it's one of those things where if you're just talking about space in the vehicle and you're thinking about a Sequoia you're gonna go why would I ever get that monster SUV when I can get the Grand Highlander which drives nicer is quieter better on fuel and offers me basically the exact same interior space now granted if you need to tow a big trailer or something sure Sequoia is the well, one Well, that's for you. it because we're looking at truck based versus not of course but just talking interior space this thing I think uh, also could displace or get some Sequoia buyers to uh, to consider it yeah because if that's all you're looking for is where to put all your kids and the dog and the gear then this will work and you know it's a funny thing there used to be a time when we figured all soccer moms were into minivans well apparently they've changed their minds because mm -hmm. they just don't want the van anymore yeah so fine you know what that's the thing with vehicles is they're cyclical and it becomes a social thing everybody wants to see them driving in an suv so have at her well after driving around uh, hawaii today a little bit I think the Grand Highlander is pretty much hitting all the notes it needs to. I do wish the third row was a little bigger. They made such a big deal out of it that I just feel like they could have added an extra two inches back there and really made it accommodating. But uh, outside of that, it's, it's like I said, it's doing everything we want it to do. It's luxurious. It's nice to cruise down the road in. Lots of power with the Hybrid Max. The only other complaint I have, and, and I think you feel this way too, it's just a little noisy in here. I don't know what it is about the wind noise today, um, but yeah, we're both hearing a lot of wind noise and a bit of road noise. Yeah, I think uh, sound deadening, Toyota, you could you could do a little bit more, particularly at this sort of luxury point. Yeah, yeah, and generally that is the case that as you move up in trim level, sometimes there is more sound deadening in the models, but it just doesn't seem to be the case here. But it's not horrible. I don't want to make it sound like it's ruining the ride or anything, because for the most part, the Grand Highlander has done everything I wanted it to do. Another decent feature here on the Grand Highlander as well that we have to mention is 5,000 pounds of towing. You know, and 5,000 pounds is pretty much most recreational things are, are five grand and under, a boat, ATVs, snowmobiles. So uh, that also opens the vehicle up to just more applications, right? If you want to bring your family out for an ATV adventure, this vehicle is uh, good for that as well. And then off-roading, we're certainly not going to call it an off-roader, but it does have drive modes. We have mud and sand, rock and ruts, and then sport and eco. Um, and Dad drove down one little kind of dirt, rutted out road today, and it was fine, right? The all-wheel drive does what it's supposed to do. It does. Plus, there's a reasonable amount of clearance and... Uh you know, just in general, I was able to pick my way through some really deep potholes without ever touching anything. So I was pretty happy with that. Yeah, and, and I think that, you know, the way the market is today, the whole adventure thing is so important that the vehicle can get you out there into the wilderness a little bit. And uh, and I think that's that DNA is here as well. And, and speaking to that, uh, Stephen didn't mention RVs. And we typically today see most people towing with trucks but really when you're at 5,000 pounds and the RV industry keeps making lighter and lighter units and let's face it if you're a younger family um, a truck might just not suit you in terms of what you need on a day-to-day -day because of this an enclosed cabin so this is actually a really good choice if you got that smaller RV you got a couple of kids you got the dog and you got all your stuff because it's all going to be inside weatherproof and you're not driving a big truck Monday to Friday just to tow on the weekend yeah and electric torque while towing always feels great <laughs> Well, 
Well, folks, we have come to the end of this video. Now, while I do wish the third row on the Grand Highlander was a smidge bigger, I still think Toyota absolutely accomplished what they set out to do. If you want a three-row crossover that will legitimately fit your family and all your stuff, but you don't want a minivan, this is an excellent choice. Now, please go below in the comments. Let me know what you think of the Grand Highlander. As always, while you're down there, don't forget to hit like, hit subscribe, hit join to become a member, and then come right back to Truck King to see what we're testing next. See ya.